Here we are with uh, Robert Garcia, Big Dave San Antonio. They're honoring uh, Bam Rodriguez and Joshua Franco. How do you feel about the turnout and how everything was? You know what? It's not what I expected, honestly, man. So many people showed up, man. Like three hours of nonstop. People wanted to take a picture and uh, autograph, you know, by, from uh, Josh and, and, and Bam, you know, both world champions from San Antonio. It, it's unbelievable, man. The love and support that they're getting here, here in, their, in their hometown. Now, you got two world champions, both at 115. Now, it's kind of it's kind of up in the air what Bam's gonna do. He may he may move down, but if a big fight presents itself, you know he may stay at 115. Now they're talking about Estrada. Uh, Estrada is a very underrated fighter on pound for pound list. How do you like that fight between Estrada and Joshua Franco? You know what? Uh, it's not an easy fight. Obviously, you know. Gallo Estrada has been ranked uh, in, in the pound for pound list for a couple years already, and he's a great fighter. But uh, but Josh, Josh is hungry. He's young, and I know he'll do whatever it takes to win this fight. And uh, you know it's already mandatory, so it has to happen uh, next. So Maxim is already trying to put that fight together sometime in May or June, and they're they're actually looking into San Antonio to make to uh, making that fight happen here in San Antonio. And uh, obviously, if that happens, well, we're definitely going to have uh, Bam defend his title on the undercard or uh, fight for a 108 or 112 title, but he will be on the undercard. How, how did the Bam Rodriguez versus Carlos Guardas fight come about? Because it was, it was, he took it, I think, what, seven, ten days' notice, and Bam, he campaigns at, at, at 108, and this fight was at 115. And Carlos Guardas is a very good fighter. He's not a, you know, he's not an easy guy. Was there any hesitation to take that fight, or you know, did you take it in a heartbeat? You know, on Sunday before the fight, when they called me, there was no no doubt in my mind that uh, that Bam is is ready to become world champion. So I took the fight right away. I didn't even have to get an answer from from uh, from Bam. Uh, I I told the promoters, yes, let's make that fight happen. They told me, are you sure? I said, yes, make that fight make that fight happen, because you know, I know Quadras, I know Quadras personally. A veteran, great fighter, great speed and great power, but I know what I know what, what Bam is. Bam is ready to become world champion, so I took the fight right away. I knew there was no way Bam, Bam was going to lose uh, this title opportunity. Uh, even though I knew the fight was difficult and, and uh, you know, tough, but I, I knew what, what Bam had done in, the tra in, in training, and he was ready to fight anybody. Now, a fight coming up, um, Chocolatito versus uh, Cesar. Um, Ray Martinez, how, how do you see that, that fight going? And could the winner possibly be Chocolatito? If Chocolatito wins, what about him and Bam at 115? There may, they're not. That may be the biggest fight in boxing. You know what? Uh, I think it's gonna be a great fight. I think uh, Martinez has great power. He has, he's got tremendous heart, so he could he could he could uh, surprise uh, the world with a good knockout. But I still pick Chocolatito to win the fight, and uh, definitely if Chocolatito wins, you know, Gallo Estrada has to fight Franco. So if uh, Chocolatito wins, I'll be more than happy to give uh, give uh, give Bam. You know, it would be Bam defending his title against Chocolatito. But honestly, in respect to Chocolatito, I would love Chocolatito to give Bam an opportunity. That's the way I want to call it because Chocolatito is is a uh, is a sport division champion. We gotta respect him and we gotta. We got to uh, admire what he's accomplished. He was at one time pound for pound the best fighter in the world. So I would love him to give Bam an opportunity. Is that like a passing of a torch, you think? Uh, it would be similar to that, you know. It wouldn't be any so bad either because Chocolatito is a great fighter, but it would be uh, unbelievable to to get that fight happen. They both fight on the zone, so it could be an e oh, easy, 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 yes. easy fight to but, make. You know, let's hope that Chocolatito gets, gets his work done and gets that win. And uh, yeah, we could definitely talk about it next. Now, um, with the news that happened about Charlo uh, yesterday, him getting arrested and stuff like that, do you think that that pretty much eliminates him as being Canelo's next opponent? Who, who would you like to so, see Canelo so the fight next? The one that got arrested was a 160 pounder. Yeah, big well, Charlo. Yeah, that, that, that's a big problem there. You know, uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, you know, you know, he's 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 innocent to proving guilty. So, you know, sometimes it could easily be uh, somebody trying to blame you for something that. That is not true, you know. Uh, but it does affect, you know. It affected uh, Rollis uh, when when that girl accused him, and that fight against Tank got canceled. Yeah. Got, actually, it didn't get canceled, but he got pulled out of the fight. And they brought in a replacement, so it could definitely hurt Charlo. But uh, I can't say he's guilty because you know there's always a lot of uh, a lot of people accusing of uh, stuff when it's not even true. 
So let's see what happens. But it, it could definitely affect the the him fighting Canelo. Uh, you know, Canelo's got other options, so I'm sure Canelo's not worried. He's got other options, but it, it will affect Charlo. Would you rather see Canelo fight uh, Charlo or Dimitri? They're saying Dimitri Bivol and then Triple G. I would rather see him fight Charlo. I think it's a big, bigger name, bigger fight, and uh, it'll it'll give us a uh, it'll give a lot of fans uh, the pleasure of getting that fight uh, out of the way. Who's who's the biggest threat to Canelo? Uh, Benavides, Charlo, Triple G, Bivol. Who do you see as the biggest think, threat to Canelo? I think, uh, I think I think it's Benavides. Benavides is a warrior, tremendous heart, great power, great speed. He's tall. I think he'll make him. He'll give him the the, the toughest fight. But I still pick Canelo winning. Now, uh, Bam and, and Joshua, they're the, they're the second set of brothers from Texas to be world champions. Um, Orlando Canizales and Gabby were the first. Um, let us know uh, what you know, what you remember, and your feelings on Orlando Canizales. You know what? Uh, I've I've always, you know, growing up, I remember watching his fights. I've always said my favorite fighter of all times was always Sugar Ray Leonard. But if, he, if 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 I go some, you know, next to him, it's Orlando Canizales. You know, I love his footwork. I love his uh, his angles. And uh, my dad, growing up, my dad always sat me down to watch fights. And uh, Orlando Orlando Canizales was one of them that my dad always. You know, encourage me to watch because his footwork was just unbelievable. You know, uh, if if some people want to go back and find some of my fights on YouTube, especially the one against Jan Jan Molina, I, I I used to do stuff like that to try to you know pivot to 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 the sides to try to do stuff that that Rolando Canizales used to do. You know, uh, and and now having somebody like Bam doing something very similar is it, just uh, you know fills me with honor. You know, to say that. One of my fighters fights very similar to Orlando Canizales because he has been one of one of my favorite fighters. He was the, he's the only Mexican uh, Hall of Famer we have out of Texas. Bam and Josh can be the second and third, right? I, I hope so. You know, Texas is is, uh, is is full of talent. You know, there's been so many great fighters right now. There's a lot of active fighters out of Texas, and uh, you know they have they have you know they have a great future here in Texas. But you know, just being that it's San Antonio with two brother champions. You know, I'm sure the, the people here in San Antonio are very proud. Let, let me ask you, and then we could uh, finish up real quick, Robert. Uh, does it does a young fighter um, that's unproven but has all the talent in the world is it harder for him to get a shot? Like let's say um, Jerron Ennis. You got you got Jerron Ennis boots. You got guys like Virgil Ortiz, which um, everyone's still talking about Crawford Spence, Crawford Spence. But do you see those guys as potentially having enough talent to beat them, or is it too early to say that they can that they I can th get the I job? I think those two guys. Boots Ennis and Virgil Ortiz, I think those those two guys are the future in the welterweight division. I think now they could both beat the champions, you know, but they will not get the title shots. The champions are not going to give them an opportunity because they know they're, they're they're risking too much and they don't fight for the same promotion. You know, right now the, uh, you know, the, the champions are, are, you know, three belts are with PBC and uh, Ortiz does not fight for BBC. Ortiz fights for, for Golden Boy promotions, so he will not get an opportunity because why would they risk losing their titles and giving it away to Golden Boy? You know, and uh, Crawford is the only one that's a free agent right now, but we don't know where he's gonna go. If he ends up with BBC, then that means the, the, you know, Ortiz definitely will never get an opportunity unless it's a mandatory or some maybe a vacant title or a purse bid has to happen for him, for him to get a title opportunity. Now, your inv the investment you made in San Antonio by opening RGBA, Hector Tanahara, 210 Bam, all, all these guys, Bam Rodriguez, all these guys that we come at San Antonio, do you feel like it was a very wise investment that you made years ago? You know what, it, it's, it's, it's the best thing I, I could have done, you know, when we're here in San Antonio, you know, five or six fighters that I have that are from San Antonio and, and, and two world champion brothers from San Antonio. Hector Tanahar is still doing big things in boxing. I think it's it's, it's great. You know, I think uh, you know it was one of the best things that I could have done. You know, I I love it. I love it here in San, San Antonio. People love me, and that's why uh, you know I I enjoy being being here in San Antonio. Thanks so much, Robert. Thank Pleasure you. speaking.